Hey, what's up? It's Michael Carbonaro. Thank you for watching this week's episode of The Carbonaro Effect. I am loving this season, and I'm loving that you're watching it, and I'm loving that you're here now in the After Effects, where I answer your questions about the episode. Thank you for writing uh, questions in. I love getting to see what you guys are thinking, and uh, let me start answering them right now. Uh, first question comes from Pete. Uh, Poppin' Pants was such a ridiculous idea. <laughs> was it hard to find someone who thought that was real? You know, I thought it was going to be, and it wasn't. I think we shot that three times. Everyone believed it, but that dude had the best reaction. Right? It agitates what? against that. Yeah, there, was, there it goes. Look. It's conducting the heat quickly. It's a foil. Yeah. And then you get your popcorn popped out of it. He didn't believe it in the end that it was a TV show. That's how hard he believed in those popcorn pants. Yeah, have you ever heard of the Carbonaro? Okay. Yeah, we're on it right now. No, we're not. Yeah, we are. No, we're not. Ted writes in, how did you get all that wine into each little bubble? Oh yeah, in the shipping store. The bubble rub, has car they put carbon dioxide inside these now, so like the fermentation hits the carbon dioxide and then it sucks it into the bubbles. Oh, wow, that's some science. The original idea came up, it was gonna be, you know, if we had like a Lego toy, if someone ever came in and shipped something like a Lego toy, maybe you can make all the little things go separately into the, into the bubbles of the bubble wrap. What? So the wine was like, ooh, let's get liquid in there, and I gave it a shot, and I'm so glad it worked. Dude, this is crazy, man. Yeah. That's the, um, the Carbonaro effect. Get the out of here, dude. Let's pop some bubbles and toast. All right, let's do it. Cheers. Salute. Salute. Molly writes in, your movie theater illusion was amazing. Thank you. It's another long time trick we've been trying to do for a while, finding the right spot to make that work. Uh, the question is, do you get nervous doing a trick that relies on a technological component like that? Good question, Molly. Yes, because you know, that was a, a real 16 millimeter projector. So Yes, it was very tricky because we we're actually, uh, this is a secret, but I'm gonna tell it. It's like, it wasn't really the film that was rolling. I made him think that it was digitizing into a regular projector, but I was really projecting that movie through a computer. If something glitches technologically wise, uh, then, then it's a mess and it takes no good. So I do get nervous. Um, okay, Doreen writes, who played the guy escaping from the movie screen in the last part of the episode? Okay, well for one, the guy who got sucked into the movie screen, that's my husband, Peter Stickle. Where are you from? Oh, I'm from, uh, what the hell? Did you touch that? Nobody touched it. Old buildings, right? Power surge, mm -hmm. probably. But the guy that he switched with is Rob Zabrecki, who is an amazing magician. He actually just goes by Zabrecki, and he's just got the coolest face, right? Oh, what the hell? What the f***? What the f***? I knew I wanted to use him for that segment as soon as we were able to pull it off. So yeah, those guys killed it. Where did Peter go? Peter went into the screen and dude came out of the screen and dude dropped the key and he walked the f*** out. What? Oh, I'm going crazy. Oh, this is nuts. Nice questions, guys. Thank you so much for writing these in. You can write more at hashtag AskMichaelCarbonaro. You can do that on Twitter or Facebook um, or Instagram, even. Figure it out. I'll find them. And uh, we'll see you next week and uh, check out the show. Thank <laughs> you.